Hi, welcome to the next episode of the SEALS Salesforce CPQ Academy videos. Okay, so what we have seen last time, and this is a follow-up video, is that we can perfectly structure your CPQ overview inside your document. So giving you a perfectly structured, nice looking document as you would want to present it to your customer. Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is actually go a step further. In many cases, you would use the grouping functionalities in Salesforce CPQ to, for instance, group by site or by an address that you want to deliver to. So these products are to be delivered in Munich and these products are to be delivered in Paris. So this is the kind of structure we actually want to bring to our documents. Let's see how we can do that with sell, uh, with a PDF Battler. Okay, let's start with our documents from last time. As you can see here, this is the document, the template that we have used, that we have uh, created last time in our video. So now what we're going to do is actually build a structure around that to represent the grouping. So we want to actually repeat all of the cars, all of the packs, all of the options, just as we have created in our previous video, yeah? but then also do that grouping for sites. Cool. So how do we do it in a document? As always, we need a structure to group on, and that structure is a table. So let's just uh, make sure this table has no padding. I don't want to split the rows. So I'm going to remove the padding, so I want it to be 100% uh, white. Okay, um, what I'm going to do here is, for instance, add a merge field to identify the table, and I'm going to call it group. I probably want to uh, display the group name or description. Huh? Let's call it name here, and let's just quickly add a merge field, call it a uh, um let's say i want to copy this one okay i want to copy this layout and do that and this i want to call it group name so then of course yeah we need to repeat this group this table for every group that exists in our uh, uh in our cpq uh in our quote and of course, we then want to show every product as we did before in uh, per group. So very, very easy. I'm just gonna cut this out, remove any unrequired lines, lines and paste it here. So this is now my group for uh, repeating the groups and in these groups I'm going to repeat all the cars and in this for this car I'm going to repeat all of the option packs and for this option packs I'm going to repeat all of the options okay so sounds easy no so uh, we have done this part the last time so now let's focus on the, on the part around that okay let's go to our uh, Let's create a new data source. Of course, it's going to be type Sokol. What did you think? I'm going to call it Academy Group uh, Demo 1. Why not? It's going to be a list of objects. And that's all here because we're going to use our famous Sokol Builder to build the query. OK, just loading all of the objects right now. Then I'm going to filter on Group. So as you know, the initial filtering might take a second or two. Um, so it's already there. And it's the quote line group. That's the object I need to select the group uh, that surrounds our, uh, our quote lines. OK, uh, which field do I want? I want to have the quote, of course, to, to which it's linked. I want to have the name. I want to have the description. I want to have the record ID. OK, that's already quite uh, something. Now I want to filter on the quote. And so I want only the groups that are linked to my quote. That's why I filter here, add a filter. OK, this looks great. So let's do this. OK, this is my query. This is how I'm going to group 
uh, for my uh, to get all my quotes. Now let's create a new doc config. So of course of type main word document. Let's call it Academy Group Demo One. Uh, I do not want to store it. Um, I'm just going to take over the title and save it. So, okay, now let's go to the configuration screen and fix this. First step is always upload our documents. So this is uh, normally the one that's last saved. I'm going to call it uh, the English version. Why not? Add a data source, so let's add the one that we just created. Add this data source. And now let's add a config type. Eh? So I want to use this uh, identifier to identify my table here. So this entire table to repeat. Okay, so I'm going to do this group. It's a table that I'm going to repeat, so let's call it table. Um, I want to do I want to use the data source group uh, academy group demo and our merge field is group uh, why not double spacing between the tables so this means that every time um, for every record it will actually uh, uh, create a new table but after the table it has to have two it will create two enters so these are nicely spread out okay so everything looks great so uh, Save. Okay, a merge field group. Oh, maybe I should save the document first. Okay, then upload it again and save it to server. Okay, that's done. So uh, let's take a look. So I have my doc config identifier. I'm going to copy that one. I'm going to go to my quotes. Okay. Uh, edit my page to add this uh, the config here. Okay, this is the one that I need. Um, okay, add it to the end, comma, my the config, save it, and go back. Okay, so we're ready to test here. Let's take a look how my documents will look. Of course, it will just repeat now the groups, eh? not all of the other configuration, but you can see now it has two groups here, just as we uh, intended to build it. Okay, cool. Let's uh, go to the next step, and that would be, um, we of course now not showing anything inside the group, which is not that cool. So uh, um, I'm going to get this group name here. And as a child of this group table, I'm going to display for every group the name, and that's the description of the group. This description is a rich text field, so that's perfectly possible. But for now, let's just take the, uh, the text as it sits. So I'm just going to strip all of the uh, HTML tags uh, away from it, from the rich text. Save it. OK, and let's test it again. I'm going to upload my document again. Uh, save to server. Okay, let's test it again. Uh, that's what I always do when I do PDF butter. I just test a lot. It just takes a second to click the button and you can see that, yeah, well, all our groups are there. We now have nicely our uh, overview of the group description. So that looks nice. But of course we have this placeholder here. That's not that nice. So let's get rid of that one. Okay, so that's very easy. Just go to our group. And let's say that um, I want to remove the, the paragraph. So the paragraph will remove the entire line. So that means that uh, this entire line will be removed like this. Uh, that will be the end result. The merge field will only remove the merge fields, but uh, leave the line. So it's going to be like this. So there is an empty space, which is not that nice, maybe. So that's why I just select to uh, uh, delete the uh, remove the entire paragraph okay save the server cool again let's test it only takes one click so why not do that and the document is already there 
Okay, preview, preview is loaded. And as you can see now, huh, uh, perfectly, the header is gone. I have my group name here. And now I should continue with this entire process here. Huh? But of course, that would take a long video. And it's exactly the same kind of process that we already have with our uh, lines. Uh, CPQ demo. So just go to that one and continue what you were doing there. So this would mean that you would have to add a child, uh, which uh, let's go to our, da our data source. You would need to add a child data source here, a new data source of type Sokol. And in this data source, you're going to actually uh, create your uh, or select all of the lines inside of your um, um, of your uh, yeah all of the lines inside of your group. So if you go to edit lines, the next step would of course be to get all of the lines. Okay, it just takes a second to load, but this is uh, the lines. So the line would be. There are, uh, there are no, so this car would be on, on this side and everything. As said, this will take a very long video and it would just be copy pasting what we did in the previous part. So let's just go and see what I've already cooked up. I've created some, uh, um, some data sources already. So I have my group seed uh, data. And as you can see here, it's my uh, grouping that I just uh, created for you in real time. Then as this one has a child and I actually linked this child to the existing data source from the previous video. Of course, when linking that to a, to a parent, we need to set the fields on how to select the parents and that can just be done here. So it's gonna be the group, has to be the same of the records, uh, uh, yeah, the record ID of actually the parent, and the parent is the group. So this is very logical, uh, nothing special here. When this entire setup is done, you can uh, of course see what the uh, um, what the entire configuration would look like. So let's load the configuration and you can see here this structure. We have the group data, then we have the main, main line items, the option packs, the options. So this is the structure that we are following, that we are building inside our documents. And it's the same here. So we have our group and under that we have our table to repeat for every, uh, for every car. So that's actually this table. And under that we have the option packs and so forth and so forth. So exactly what we did in the previous video except now it's a child of this group. So let's take a look what happens if I create the, uh, um, the quote for this one. This is already prepared. So I just click the button. Document is already ready. It's already there. And as you can see, we have our group name here. We have our car. We have our option packs, all of the stuff that we wanted to see. And for the second group, we have our second car, all of the option packs, just as it sits in our uh, in our line items. So now we are per group actually perfectly structured our cars where to be delivered. So let's leave it at this. If there is any questions, just send us a mail to info at sales uh, PDF, sorry, <laughs> info at pdfbutler.com, of course. Or if you want to have some uh, support on this, just uh, send a mail to uh, service at pdfbutter.com or support at pdfbutter.com. So we're glad to help. Thank you.